Okay, this lesson is for interpreting graphs part two, and we will start with number one. What if you have greater than or less than zero problems? Um, so a function is greater than zero when its graph is above the x-axis and less than zero when it is below the x-axis. So the function is f of x. So it's kind of like saying a function or the y's, the function is the y's, the y's are greater than zero when the function's graph is above the x-axis. So here's our question. It says on what interval is f of x greater than zero? So you have to understand what this is asking. So the word interval most of the time, almost all the time, except for one exception, so 99% of the time, when I ask what interval, I mean what are the x's, what are the x values, what are the x values that are making f of x greater than zero? In other words, what are the x values that are making y greater than zero? Okay, so if you want to look at this graph, you can say, well, if y is greater than zero, then there's this horizontal line that I can draw, y equals zero. This is the line y equals zero. So anything above the line y equals zero is going to be greater than zero. Okay, so these, this is where the function is above the x-axis. This is where the function is greater than zero. Okay, and most people can point that out. It's just writing the interval. We have to use interval notation and here's where the change has to occur. You see it, but when I say on what interval is f of x greater than zero, then I'm asking you what are the x values that make that happen? So that's when it gets a little tricky. So this is where the y values are greater than zero, but these are the x values that are making it happen. All right, and it's greater than zero, not greater than or equal to zero. So that means that there's gonna have to be an open hole right here. Because right here, when x is negative two, y equals zero. But I don't want where y equals zero, I want where y is greater than zero. And here is where when x is 1, y equals 0. So the interval, on what interval is f of x greater than 0 would be the x coordinates from negative infinity to negative 2 parentheses union parentheses 1 to infinity. I don't have any x's but I know that I'm talking about the x's. On what interval are my inputs, what inputs are making my outputs be greater than 0? parentheses on the negative 2 because that's not included, parentheses on the 1 because one's not included. So now we can do the same thing for question 2. On what interval is f of x less than 0? Well that would be these guys right here. These are the y, this is where the graph is below the x-axis so these y values are all negative. All right? So this might be one half negative one. That y value is negative. This is zero, maybe negative two. That y value is negative. All of these y values are negative. But on what interval is f of x less than zero means what are the x's that are making that happen? And the x's that are making the y's be negative are from here to here. And again, we at the x-intercepts, that's where it equals zero. So that would be open circle from when x is negative two to when x is one. All right, let's look at the second one. Determine the intervals on which the following functions are greater than zero and the intervals on which they are less than zero. So same kind of question. Well, we know that I'll write it out this way. f of x is greater than zero when it's above the x-axis. So we're talking about here, not here, and here. 
So those are the where the, the function is above the x-axis. But we want to know the x-coordinates, the inputs. It's all about the x. When I ask about intervals, I mean what are the x-coordinates that are making the y-coordinate behave this way. So the x-coordinates that are behaving this, making it behave this way are starting here, open circle, all the way to here, open circle, and then not here. These x's are making the y values negative, and then here, open circle, and sometimes we want to go and color it up, but no, we're talking about x's. These are the x's that are making it happen. Okay, so the interval that's making f of x be greater than 0 would be from parentheses negative 4, comma, to when x is 0, parentheses, union, parentheses, when x is 7, all the way to infinity. And then f of x is less than 0 right here. These y values are below the x-axis, so they're less than 0. These y values are all negative. These y values are all negative. But what are the x values that are making that happen? Well, that those y values here correspond to these x values. These are the x values that are making the y value be negative. These are the x values right here that are making the y value be negative. And we write that in interval notation starting from the left hand side. So that's negative infinity. All those x's until you get to negative 4. Parentheses union. Then we start over when x is 0 to when x is 7. Alright, so you may want to try this, this one, but before I let you, let me make sure that this, this bold line here is accidentally too, too highlighted. Here's the x-axis down here, just so you don't get confused. Here's the x-axis. Alright, so f of x is greater than 0. If this function is gr above the x-axis. everywhere. So the x, the interval, or the x values that are making that happen, f of x is greater than 0 when x is any number from negative infinity to infinity. Which means that f of x is less than 0 never. Alright, let's move to concept number 2. Maximum and minimum values. Okay, and the definitions here are important. Okay, so I'll explain them. Uh, it says, suppose I is an interval on which F is defined, and C is an interior point of I. When the function changes from increasing to decreasing at C, then F of C is a local maximum of F. Alright, so let's highlight that. So. You have to be on the lookout for when the function changes from increasing to decreasing. Then it's a local maximum. All right, so the word local maximum means that you're going to be looking for something like this. See this mountain peak here? That's a local maximum because the function is increasing. It's going up. The y values are getting bigger. The function is increasing. And then it turns around and the function is decreasing. The y values are getting smaller. So when you have a change from increasing to decreasing, then you can say that's a local maximum. So this problem has a local maximum of, remember, the function is the y values. So there is a local maximum of 2.626. And the input, that happens when x is negative 1.52. Eight. So sometimes I'll ask you to split up the ordered pair. This is where the maximum is, is located. It's mo located right here. So if I just ask you where's the local max, you can give me the ordered pair, but sometimes I might say what is the local maximum, and then you would give me the y value. All right. When a function changes from decreasing to increasing at C, then we have a local minimum. So when the function changes from decreasing to increasing, 
that's called a local minimum. So we have here this function is de decreasing. That has a negative slope. It's going down. The y values are getting smaller. And then we get to the bottom and then it starts increasing. So that means that there is a local maximum at that location. So the local minimum is negative 0 0.226 and that happens when x is 1.528. So I might ask you to state the location of the local minimum. You could give me the ordered pair. But if I ask you what is the local minimum, that's the y-coordinate. Now we have to uh, explain why these definitions are important because we have two types of maximums and two types of minimums. The next type of maximum is called an absolute maximum. So the definition matters here and I'll explain it. If f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain of f then f of c is an absolute maximum. So what that means is this c is an x coordinate and that x is an x coordinate. I'm sorry. This c is an x coordinate and that x is an x coordinate. If this x coordinate causes this y coordinate to be bigger than all the x's that make these this f of x then that's an absolute maximum. All right, so what that basically is saying is you're just looking for the highest point. All right, so that is not an absolute maximum because there is a point over here that's higher. All right, so then there's a trick going on here. Is this an absolute maximum? Well, there's a hole there. Okay, so that's not really a point. And we're going to keep getting closer and closer and closer to that point. And so really you can't identify an absolute maximum. There, for this problem, there is no absolute maximum. But there is an absolute minimum. So let's look at this definition. If f of c is less than or equal to f of x, if this specific x coordinate is causing this y coordinate to be smaller than all the other y coordinates, that's an absolute minimum. So if you look at this graph, this looks like um, it's a little bit hard to tell what this is. I'm going to say it's negative 4, <laughs> negative 6. It might be a little bit off, but that's the point. That x coordinate, negative 4, is, is creating a y coordinate, negative 6, that is lower than all the other y coordinates. So there is an absolute minimum of negative 6 when x is equal to negative 4. Alright, so the difference between absolute maximum and absolute minimum. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Absolute maximums and absolute minimums can occur at endpoints. Okay, so you can have an absolute max or a min at the endpoints because of the definition. It just has to be the y coordinate has to be lower than all the other or higher than all the other. But local extrema, and that's what these are called extrema, mins and maxes are extrema. Local mins and local maxes cannot occur at endpoints because of the definition. You have to have a change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. There. So definitions local max, local min, absolute max, absolute min. Alright, so then you could pause the video and try these. It says classify all extrema for the function graphed. So the extrema that we're talking about is, and just for the sake of writing, we're just going to write the locations. So let's find the location of a local min, a local max, absolute min, absolute max. Okay, so now you have the setup. You can just give me the order pairs. You may want to try it. Pause the video. So local max occurs when you have a change from decreasing to increasing. So there is a local max at negative 2, negative 3.2. You also have another local max here. I mean a local min here where you're changing 
from decreasing and increasing. So basically you're just looking for peaks and valleys. Um, so there, there's two local mins. The local max, you're looking for a little local mountain range here. It's changing from increasing and decreasing. So there's a local max at 0.75 and 0 0.439. So there's the local max. All right, now for this function, remember the way our graphing convention goes, if you don't see a point, it's an arrow. So this function goes on and on and on forever and ever. Okay, so let's look for an absolute min. An absolute min is located when you have a y coordinate, that y value that's lower than all the other y values. And so we have that here. So there is an absolute min at negative two, negative 3.2. So we see that you can have an absolute max, uh, absolute min, and a local min be the same value. It, this is satisfying both definitions. Absolute max, is there a y-coordinate that's higher than all the other y-coordinates? Well, since this function keeps going up and up and up forever, there is none. All right, so let's look at this one. We'll just write the ordered pairs. So we want to find all the extrema, local min, local max, absolute min, absolute max. Okay, so local min, we're looking for a, val a valley with a change in decreasing to increasing. So that's right there. So there is a local min at 1.694, negative 1.2. Six. Now remember, I'm asking you just for the location, but just to remind you that y coordinate is what the local min is, and it occurs when x is that. There is a local max here. You have a change from increasing and decreasing. This is like a local mountain range, so we have a local max here at negative 2.361 and 2.075. That's the location. That is the actual local max. And then absolute min, do we have a y value that's lower than all the other y values? Well, yes, we do. So again, we have a local min that's also an absolute min. Now, here's something different, absolute max. Can you find a y coordinate that is higher than all the other y coordinates? And yes, we can find one, that's right there. And that's blurry, but it's 4, 3.2 is what it is. And again, this is not a local max. You can't have a local max or a local min at endpoints because you don't have a change from increasing to decreasing. So that's why that's not a local max. All right, if you try this one, again, we've got this, this is a cubic polynomial, degree three polynomial. All right, so the local min, local max, absolute min, absolute max. So we have to look for local valley, a, a valley that looks like a, a valley in a mountain range because we want to go from decreasing to increasing. So there's our local min. And a local max would be here. Absolute min. We're looking for a y coordinate that is lower than all the other y coordinates. And since this goes down forever and ever and ever, there is none. And an absolute max, we're looking for a y coordinate that's higher than all the other y coordinates. And that goes forever and ever, there is none. All right, now if you want to read through this and try this one on your own, it's kind of fun to try to do it. It says draw a graph that fulfills the following characteristics. All right, it has to have a local maximum when x is negative 8 and when x is 2. It has to have a local minimum when x is negative 3. It has an x-intercept at 5. It's greater than or equal to 0 when x equals 5 as a whole at x equals 4 as a y-intercept of 2 
and it has no absolute maximum or absolute minimum. So pause the video and try this because this is a great review of a bunch of definitions. Okay, so what I would do is probably go over to negative 8 to so start with A and say, or it has a local maximum when X is negative 8. So I might just sort of put a little change and increase and a decrease in there. I can, I'm using pencil. I can erase that, but that's how I'll start. It also has a local max when X is 2. So I'll just pick a spot when X is 2, maybe right there. And it has a local minimum when X is negative 3. So maybe I'll just try a local min like that. And it has an x-intercept, so that's a definition you need to know, maybe review. x-intercept is at 5. That means that there's a, at 5 on the x-axis there's a point, so that's the point 5, 0. The x-intercept is 5, so there's a point there. All right, now this is the, probably the hardest one. It's greater than or equal to 0 when x equals 5. What's greater than or equal to 0? Well, the graph, which means the y coordinates, the y values is greater, the y value is greater than or equal to zero when x equals five. So that means that there is a point somewhere right there or above it. So I'm going to skip that for a minute. All right. The next thing is there's a hole at x equals four. That means there's a there's an ordered pair for something that doesn't really exist, but there's a hole there. So I'm just going to pick maybe, since this is up here, I'm going to pick this hole right here, 4, 1. I just, I just made it up, but I, I know that I have to come from here down to there, so I picked above the x-axis. So that is a hole. See how I have an open circle there? It's not really a point. It's a location of a hole. All right, y-intercept, another word we would want to review. That's an order pair 0, 2. The y-intercept is 2 means that there's a point on the y-axis at 2. So that's 0, 2. All right, and then it has no absolute max or absolute min. And remember, I've got to go back and do this. All right, so now I've kind of got, got the sketch. So no absolute minimum means that I'm going to make this go down forever and ever and then I'm going to come up and get this local max at x equal negative 8 and then I'll come and get this local min at x equals um, negative 3 and then it says I have to have the y-intercept of 2 but then there's a local max at 2 just clean this up a little bit and then it's got a hole, which means that it goes to that point, but skips over that point. And then now it says it's greater than or equal to 0 when x is 5. So here we could vary it. I could go right at and make 5, 0 be on it, or I could make it go a little bit above it. So you have some choices there. And that's what mine look like. So that's choice 1, that's choice 2. Okay.